You're curious about that stuff, are you? Well, you get a friend coming to look too. And kite flying's a big deal out here, is it? Okay, you girls go on. Go on now. Hi. As you just saw, there's plenty of interest in wind-powered aircraft. My name is Hank DeBay, and I want to use this video to explain to you a bit more about the concept of wind-powered aircraft. Aircraft that fly without using any fuel and without producing any greenhouse gases. Today I'm located on a farm that's in a triangle formed by the cities of Greeley, Fort Collins, and Loveland, Colorado. Normally I do the testing on the Pawnee National Grassland portion of the American Prairie, about 35 to 70 miles away from here. I want to show you the equipment I use and how it is configured. I hope you enjoy the video. This is the equipment I use when I go out to the Pawnee National Grassland. This is a kite with a surface area of about 27 square feet. It uh, serves as the upper wing, and it's of a design called a Rakaku. This slightly smaller kite with a surface area of about 21 square feet serves as the lower wing. These are the tether materials I use. They're both Dacron. This one has a brake strength of about 70 pounds. This one has a brake strength of about uh, 150 pounds. And they're mounted in this frame. The frame is secured to the ground through a stake. Right here. And then the electric drill is used to wind in the tether when need be. To know how high the kite is and how hard the wind is blowing, this little device gets attached to the kite. And that transmits down to a small receiver here. And then that's connected to the USB port of a computer. And I'll show that operating shortly here. There we're getting some wind on the lower kite as well. And normally there'd be much more separation on the two kites. I've only got three or four hundred feet or three hundred feet I think. Four hundred seventy. Thirteen. There. Break. It would actually be a pretty nice day to fly. It's just that I'm not in a good place geographically to fly. The next video segment will be of an actual test flight at the Pawnee National Grassland. The Pawnee National Grassland comprises two areas totaling about 271,000 acres or 420 square miles. The grassland is referred to on Wikipedia as an especially depopulated area of the Great Plains, and that's just ideal for testing the wind-powered aircraft concept. The red arrows point to the two sections of the grassland and also point to the city of Denver, Colorado to provide some perspective. The blue star indicates where the first part of this video was recorded, and the green star indicates where the upcoming video was recorded. The video that's going to be shown next was shot late in the afternoon of a day 
that was particularly frustrating. The wind had been variable with many attempts to launch the system, resulting in the kites gently settling to earth several hundred yards away, which required me to walk out, retrieve the kites, wind in the tethers, and try again. Adding to my frustration, the sensor package that reports altitude and wind speed had become broken, and I had resorted to flying the kites without it. This meant having to judge altitude by eye and wind speed by the amount of tension on the tether. I had decided this would be the last attempt of the day and didn't really expect success. I cut the kites loose and started to pack things up while waiting for the kites to fall to the ground. After a few moments, I noticed that the kites weren't falling. I started chasing after them, and later I pulled my iPhone from my pocket to record things as I went. As a point of reference, you can see in this zoomed-in view that the lower kite maintains its altitude with respect to a cloud formation in the distance. The upper kite is much higher, and the resolution of the iPhone's camera is too limited to show the upper kite. I followed the kites as they flew as a system. That is, they were maintaining altitude and were functioning as a wind-powered aircraft. They were flying without the need for fuel by simply harnessing the power of the winds at different altitudes. Finally, after several minutes, the wind at the surface picked up considerably, thereby eliminating the wind differential with the upper kite. This allowed the tether connecting the two kites to droop to the ground where it snagged on a cactus plant and brought the system to a halt. The flight was finished. As you can see, even simple kites can illustrate the basic concept that makes a wind-powered aircraft possible. Kites, however, while cheap and easy to deal with, have several drawbacks that the next stage of the wind-powered aircraft project will address. Larger wings will be used to achieve greater altitude separation, thereby exposing the wings to greater and more consistent wind differentials. Additionally, the larger wings will be controllable to allow a variation in their lift to drag relationships and their ability to roll and turn to oblique angles with respect to the wind. This will permit the wind-powered aircraft to ascend, descend, and turn to fly in different directions. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and please check in occasionally for further updates.